There are some other interesting things that are happening in the field of, um, of DIY medicine as well. This is from a presentation that was done at Maker Fair in the US, uh, I think about two months ago. The device you see in the bottom right is called OpenPCR, which is a polymerized chain reaction device. What this does is take a sample of DNA and replicate it. So you can take a very small sample and then it will make more and more copies of it. This whole device can be built once again for, this, for a couple of hundred dollars. The designs for this have all been published. Anyone can build these devices now. By then performing some analysis on the sample that has been multiplied using the machine that they show up in the top right, and the plans for that are also available online, and then doing some uh, using a laptop video camera uh, to analyse the, the separation of the different parts of the DNA, it is then possible to track individual genes on an individual's DNA. In this particular example, what they were doing was showing whether someone can whether someone likes the taste of Brussels sprouts. So they would have a volunteer take a sample. They'll replicate the DNA, um, separate it out, look for the particular gene that specifies whether um, your body is capable of accepting a certain chemical, and then say, yes, you do or you do not like Russell Sprouts. Another factor in this is the availability of, um, of a lot of professional level gear. It's not just DIY. So this is an ultrasound machine. Same sort of thing as you'd find in a hospital or a veterinary surgery. The only difference is that this photo was taken in my friend's garage. And um, he bought it on eBay, fully functioning, perfectly operational for $400. And a lot of this sort of professional level equipment is now becoming available to individuals with the, um, partly with the knowledge of how to use it and also partly with creativity for using it for different things. So this is just an example. This is actually a scan of my left arm. So it's a cross section going straight into my arm here. And if you look across the top, that's the skin level there. About a millimetre and a half, two millimetres down, that's the layer of subcutaneous fat just under, my, under the skin. One of the things you can see here, the interesting bit, is this little object here, which is under the skin, that's, um, that's actually showing up an RFID microchip, which is embedded in my left arm. Um, I implanted this about four and a half years ago. It's the same technology as used by vets for identifying animals. And um, I implanted it, I probably shouldn't be showing you this while you're eating lunch. Um, I had other pictures showing the actual implantation process, but I very thoughtfully didn't include those. Um, so you can see there down the bottom the actual microchip next to a couple of grains of rice for scale. So that was just implanted in my left arm. And so using the same sort of scanner as a vet uses to identify a pet, it's possible to scan my arm and then get the ID out of that, which sounds very Orwellian, and it is, and that was part of the reason that I did it. I was trying to demonstrate some of the... Um, both the benefits and the dangers of this sort of technology. But it lets you do some interesting things. So this is a, um, a keyboard that I modified. I took off the left wrist rest and put a homemade RFID reader in there. So what I can do is read um, the chip in my arm simply by turning my arm over on the keyboard. So I can unlock the computer by scanning the chip in my arm. No one else can unlock the computer. Um, a little while ago, <coughs> uh, I did an interview on Sunrise with Koshi and Mel. They were very interested in this sort of thing as well and um, I demonstrated the front door lock on my house. So when I walk up to the door of my house, I can just put my arm next to the door. The home automation system recognises that it's me because it reads the microchip in my arm, door unlocks and I can walk inside. So there are all sorts of unusual places that you can take this sort of technology. But everything I've been talking about so far is just playing around with, um, you know, it, it's one-off hacks. What happens if you have an idea and you then want to take that to the next level and produce it professionally or you want to sell something that you have invented? There are a whole lot of services that help with that. And one, of the, um, one of the important things, the services like um, the company, this is not the only one, this is just one example, a company in the US called Pinoco. They have things like laser cutters, um, 3D printers, like high definition ones, and a whole bunch of other equipment that you can use to produce objects. And these are just some examples of things that people have made. You design it on your computer, send your files off to them. Their machinery does the, um, the cutting and the shaping. They post it back to you and you end up with a fully professionally presented um, object at the end of the day. It's not um, second rate. It's done on the same sort of machinery that is used for producing uh, retail goods. And so you can do things like this. This was an object. Um, this is a, a clock kit that is sold by... Um, by Adafruit Industries in the US, and they have laser cut acrylic case. So you put it together and it actually looks pretty cool. There are all sorts of other things that you need to do. 
For example, to produce um, PCBs, if you want to manufacture something in one-off or very small quantities, it's quite hard to do things like producing PCBs. And the other thing you have to deal with is the ever-shrinking electronics. Um, I have actually have a bag of these here. This is a resistor, um, so you can have a look for yourself. This tiny little bag, there are actually 50 of them in that bag. This is the sort of size of part that you have to deal with when you're making electronics these days. And that's my finger, so you can see how small that is. So what I'm going to talk about now is a sequence of events that happens when you have an idea for something and then you want to have it end up as a finished product in very small quantities, but still get the economy that all of the big guys get with their manufacturing plants. So dealing with this sort of stuff, um, uh, and also this story pretty much starts on my kitchen table. So that's literally the table in my kitchen at home. So on that table, with the exception of the laptop that you can't see there, is all of the equipment that I need to come up with a prototype for a new electronic device, uh, prove that it works, and then produce a prototype uh, using the microscope and things so I can manipulate the parts, and then send the files off for production. So there are a couple of examples. This one is a device that I worked on a little while ago, which is an energy monitoring system for a house or a, uh, like a home or a business. So this is an example of it. This is a prototype, it's all hand assembled. But the idea with this is that you can install it and attach it to a switchboard or uh, connect it up to power cabling in the house or office. And it takes readings about every 30 seconds for power consumption and then sends that information via the internet back to a web service, and then we can generate graphs. So this is a graph from yesterday showing power consumption in my house. And I can access this information using a web browser at any time. So if someone turns on the oven, you see the big spike in power, and you can track it down to individual appliances. So this device was designed and the first prototype made um, from the moment I said, stuff it, I'm going to do it to having the first prototype operational was about four hours. <clears throat> so to take it from the prototype stage to an actual product, um, there are a couple of steps you go through. Firstly, what I do is take the, um, the circuit design that I've, um, that I've worked through with the prototyping and put it into a design package. I typically use Eagle, but there are a number of other packages around. You can take an existing board and incorporate it into a design. And from the design of the schematic, that is then translated into the actual physical layout. The schematic defines what parts are required, and then you munge them all together to make them fit into the shape that you want. What happens then is that your, the software generates some design files that can be sent off for manufacturing. So I then generate those files, and I email them to a contact in China, and say, I want you to make me one of these. How much, please? And usually a few hours later, they come back with an answer. They'll say, that'll be $10.27, and it will take us however long. So then, very frustratingly, I sit around. It usually takes about two weeks to go from providing them the design files to an actual finished manufactured product rolling off of the production line in China. And when I say production line, um, this can be very low volume. We can be talking about 10 units if you want to just make a few of something. It then takes about a week of shipping, and I then end up with a very big box delivered by FedEx. So you open up the box, and you have the actual finished product. And once again, I have, one of, I have a few of these here, so if people want to see the end result, <clears throat> this is the end result that came out of an actual Chinese assembly system at essentially the same cost as it would be for a very large multinational company wanting to design something similar, and all done in the space of about three weeks. So if you have the creativity and access to these various tools and, um, and new techniques that are available, and obviously the internet is the underlying driving force in all of this, and it's possible to go from wild idea in your head to fully completed professionally manufactured product in about three weeks landed and ready to sell in a single to very small quantities. So I hope that's given you some ideas. And, um, and if you think about the implications of this and what it will mean for mass market manufacturing, product customization, uh, there are all sorts of places that this can go. So thank you very much.